in this video, I'm going to show you how to get some more mileage out of simple triads. You know, we've all been there. We see the chords on a chart and we typically tend to default to just the basic triad versions of those chord shapes. But in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how you can take basic shapes that you probably already know and I can go ahead and add some embellishments to those shapes so you can get some depth and dimension in the kind of sounds that you're able to play without having to learn new chords. So let's go ahead. I'm going to fire up a track. It's a one, two vamp, meaning G major, A minor. I'm going to show you some of these shapes in action. Afterwards, I'll show you where the shapes come from, as well as the exact rhythm and palm muting technique that I'm using. So let's get right to it. <laughs> Right, so there you go that was a very simple chord ramp like i said g major and a minor but i played some interesting voicings here specifically i played a g add nine i'm not sure exactly where that came from and then i also played like an a minor add 11. some folks might call that a minor 11 others might call it a minor add four but in essence, it's an A minor chord shape, and I'm adding the fourth degree. And over the A, you can hear it sounds quite cool. What I'm going to do just real quick for reference sake, I'm going to play the track again. The first time, I'm going to play standard G major triad and the standard A minor triad. And then on the repeat, I'm going to use these more interesting chords just so you can hear the contrast between playing plain vanilla triads and on the second time around using some embellishments by adding some additional notes. Let's check it out. So here we have just a standard G triad. And now just a standard A minor triad. Now let's embellish this by adding a note. And here's the Billy's version on A minor. All right, so let's check out what happened there. In this instance, this is a standard first inversion G major triad. And what I did is I took the G note to the A and I added that to this chord. And that's why this is called a G add nine. So I'm simply playing a G chord and then I'm adding the ninth degree. And why is this called the ninth? Well, if I start here on G, it's one, A, two, B, three, C, four, D, five, E, six, F sharp, seven, G, eight, A is the ninth degree instead of the octave that we had before. So that is a pretty cool version that you can use to play an add nine over G. If I play this over an A note, if I play this over an E note, as you can see, that shape is movable. This is one of those interesting shapes that when you play it, the root note is not actually present. Like if you look at this as a G add nine, there's my root note, but I'm not playing it. So this is what we call a rootless G add nine. Now, of course, if you're playing this in a worship setting, the rest of the band and the bass, they'll play the G uh, root note and they'll play the G chord. But in our case, we are actually not playing the root, yet this is still a G add nine. So as long as you know your root is over here on, on the third string, then you can move that anywhere you want. Just make sure that you are taking the root note movement into consideration. So that's a cool shape, G add nine. Now for the A minor, remember I showed you the standard A minor triad, looks like this. But I played this. And if I do that over an A chord, or rather an A bass note, so you can hear it in context. It's an 
A minor add 4 or A minor add 11, depending on how you want to say it. So all that means is the C note is my th flat third. I've got my root note. And then this D note is what we call the add 4. Now, why is this the 4? Well, C is the flat third, and the next note up in the scale is D. And that's going to make an A minor add 4. Now, in essence, all that happened is for this shape, I played a standard G and I moved my top note up a fret. And then for this shape, I had the standard A minor and I moved my middle note down two frets. So for the G, the G went from G to A. And for the A minor, the E went from E to D. And if you look at voicings like this, um, what's interesting about this is if you look at a piano, and if you're going to play G, B, D on a piano like this, for example, every note will have a note open in the middle, right? But if I play on the same thing, if I play um, any triad in its root position, there's going to be a note in between. But in this case, if I play C, D, A in terms of the notes, the C and the D, they're actually right next to each other on the piano. And that's known as a cluster, which means there's not a note in between the two notes. And that's why it's a really nice tension, but it's, it's got some an interesting color to it. And I can also do a cluster voicing when I play it like this, the G at four. Because the B flat, or in this case, actually just a normal B, and the C, they're literally one note next to each other, as opposed to the C to the D where there's like two frets. So this is, these are known as cluster voicings, and I use the cluster voicing for the A minor add 11. And that's the gist of it. There's so many variations of this. I just wanted to show you the simplest version that you can do here. Now, what you've seen now is we've had some movement occur. Um, this is a G triad, G add nine, and then I can also have A minor seven, And why is this A minor 7, even though it looks like a C triad? Well, remember, we're not playing this over C, we're playing this over A, which means the C is a flat third, make, making it minor. The E is a fifth, and this G is a flat 7, and this is why this is A minor 7. So as you can see, you can experiment by either moving the top note up, or, in this case, A minor, moving the top note down. And then that can create some nice movement. There's a lot of movement that can be created between that. So let me go ahead and play that for you with a track, and then afterwards I'll come and break down the rhythmic pattern that I used, as well as showing you where this movement comes from. So my rhythm is slightly different, I'm going to get to the picking pattern, but for the G add 9, I played G add 9 going to normal G. So for the G I played, simply by moving this finger up and down. G add 9, G, G add 9, and now I took that similar idea over here. With this A minor at 11 that we had before, but I also added in this G note, which makes it an A minor 7 at 4. So these chords can be a little bit confusing for sometimes it's called a 4, other times 11, but in this case, this is A minor 7 at 4. And then my movement is simply from the G note to the A note which will be and then I 
display coming down like that. So nice and simple, instead of playing G to A minor, I can either play G add 9 to A minor add 4, or I can have movement from the G add 9 to the G, and then A minor 7 add 4 to A minor add 4. I'm just moving the, the 7th away when I go back to the A minor. All right, so you can see all those shapes on the screen as we've played them, and it's simply just the triads by moving the notes around. So that takes care of where we find the notes. There's actually many different ways in which you can do this. You can play a G triad like this. You can go down one note, up a note on the high string. You can go down a note on the middle string. You can go up a note on the middle string, down a note on the low string, up a note on, a, on the low string, and then back to a G. So let me do all of that for you in A. So if this is my A triad, I can go up a note with the highest note, down a note, up a note in the middle, down a note, up a note on a low note, down a note, and A. So quite simply, I get seven shapes. This is my triad. So I can either go up from the high note or down from the high note. Up from the middle note, down from the middle note, up from the low note, down to the, down from the low note. And that gives me A, add nine, maybe seven, A six, A add four, a sus4, A sus2, back to A. That's the concept where this comes from. If you look at the previous video um, on the channel, we will explain that in more detail. But now you know how you can go ahead and embellish these triads. Uh, there's so many variations. But let's look at the rhythm, because the rhythm added quite a lot of uh, character to what I played there, because uh, if you look at music, you've got rhythm, harmony, and melody. So harmony is when you play different notes together in harmony with each other, that forms chords. Melody is obviously the melodic movement, that's typically what the singers will sing. And then the rhythm, that is the rhythm that you use to strike the notes or your chords, or the rhythm that you use to sing the melody, or even the rhythm that the drums will use to go ahead and create the rhythmic pattern over there. All right, so now we know that rhythm is one of the most overlooked parts. Let me go and show you the picking pattern for this. Now, why do I say rhythm is one of the most overlooked parts? If you get a worship song and you look at the charts that you get on a Sunday, it will just have the lyrics and chords written above the lyrics. So it doesn't show you any rhythmic information. It also doesn't show you any specific voicings from a harmony point of view. And also there's no melodic information written down there. So it is kind of like the dark ages when it comes to the way that we're going to write down music for people on stage because it doesn't show the rhythms, it doesn't show the kinds of voicings, and it doesn't show what kind of melodic things you can add. And that's why on this channel and at our website and our academy at worshipguitarskills.com, we teach people how to kind of break out of that mold by just playing simple chord shapes over lyrics and actually being able to introduce powerful rhythmic patterns really cool voicings, and also accessing the melodic side that is on offer when you play your parts. So all of that we say, I used um, this rhythm. So it's a palm muted part, which means I'm taking kind of this karate chop part of my palm, placing it just on the strings like this. Then I kind of get that muffled sound. Instead of. So I had my palm resting there the whole time. And then my pattern was simply this. So if I were to talk about the strings, it'll be three, two, three, one if we just look at my first four notes. So it's the third string, the second string, the third string, and the highest note. Just like that. 
And before I repeat it again, I just throw in the second string. So string wise, three, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one. And that's my pattern that I repeat. So it's a solid rhythmic structure that I repeat over and over. For the ending, obviously three, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, and then one, two, three. Where I take my hand off the the guitar string, so it's no longer palm muted. And that is the, the rhythm there. So now we've looked at the chord, the way that you can embellish it by adding additional notes. We've looked at the technique of palm muting that I'm using. And then we also showed you the actual picking pattern and the rhythm that it sounds like. So now let's go ahead and play the track again. You now have a, a good understanding of the voicings, how we're adding notes, the rhythm, as well as the technique. Let's see it in action. Here we go. <laughs> Alright, so there you go. I hope you had fun with this and that you can see how powerful it is for you to go ahead and embellish these simple triad voicings and then using palm muting and a 16th note rhythm like I've done there to create a pretty cool part over a simple two chord vamp. Now, if you want to learn more about this kind of thing and kind of understanding the fretboard in a more intricate way to actually see what you can do to add more a variety as it relates to voicings and to also add a, a stronger melodic element to your playing go ahead and check out the links in the description there's a number of links to additional videos on youtube um, as well as some of our worshipguitarskills.com resources some free some paid you'll be able to go down there get all the details and another thing to let you guys know is that every week we run that worship guitar show it's a live stream uh, we can ask questions and we can interact together in real time. If you want to get notifications about that, just go to that worshipguitarshow.com and you'll be able to join the mailing list. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.